Hello everyone. Welcome to Legacy Age Academy. There has been a news about coral reefs and coral bleaching. Let's see in this video, what do you understand by coral bleaching and why it happens? What is the importance of coral reefs? As usual, we will also be discussing a question at the end. So let's start. You can see here the Great Barrier Reef, okay, which is in the coast of across the, along the coast of Australia. It is suffering from another mass bleaching event. Okay, that is what is being discussed in this particular article. Let's understand in this video what are corals. Okay, corals are imagine a corals are like an underwater invertebrate structures. They are invertebrates and they live underwater and they're colonial in nature. Okay, these are the three characteristics. These are the three key terms which you will have to use when you are defining a coral. Okay, and what does this coral do? How does it live its life? It extracts calcium carbonate from the seawater and it creates a hard shell or the exoskeleton, okay, in order to protect its soft body. Okay, its body is very soft. So, in order to protect it, it will have a covering that is composed of the carbonate, calcium carbonate that it extracts from seawater. And this coral is said to be in symbiotic relationship with algae. What is symbiosis? If you have studied your environment, you would know symbiosis is something, it's like a give and take policy. For example, when I say the coral reefs are having a symbiotic relationship with an algae, which means coral reefs give something to the algae and in return, algae gives something to the coral reefs. It should be like this, coral reefs and algae, if they have symbiotic relations. Coral reefs will give something to the algae and in return, algae will give something to the coral reef or the coral polyp for that matter. And this is said to be symbiotic relationship where there is a mutual exchange. Okay, what does the coral reefs give algae and what algae gives corals or coral polyp for that matter? The coral polyp, you can see here, the coral polyp provides algae with a protected environment. We have seen the corals extract the calcium carbonate and they make the hard shells. So, it, it provides some kind of protection to algae at the same time. At the same time, algae, algae gives oxygen, algae provides oxygen to coral polyp. So, the symbiotic relationship between the coral polyp and algae will give rise to something called as coral reefs. And most of these coral reefs and most of these coral reefs have fluorescent pigments with which they look very attractive. When we look at the coral reefs, they look very attractive to humans. Now, let's see what is the distribution of coral reefs. You can see here, coral reefs require warm water. That is the reason why most of the coral reefs, you will find it along the equator and also between Tropic of Cancer, that is 23 and a half degree north and 23 and a half degree south, that is Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn is the area, is the region where you find the lot of coral reefs. See, you can see here, the red mark that you are seeing is the location of coral reefs and most of the coral reefs, most of the coral reefs lie along this belt, that is 23 and a half north to 23 and a half degrees south. That doesn't mean coral reefs are absent. Okay, you can see here the temperate region. You can see here, you can see across along the coast of Australia and this region is not under the Tropic of Cancer or Tropic of Capricorn. But still, if there is a warm current flowing through, if you have geography, if you have studied oceanography, you will know what warm currents are. Okay, there are two types of currents. One is warm current and the other one is cold current. Whenever, if there is a warm current, in, during that time also, because of the rise in the temperature of the water, you can find the coral reefs or coral polyps. Okay, Worldwide, coral reefs comprise of 1,10,000 square miles, which means it's a large area. Okay, This is the expansion or the distribution of coral reefs in the world. But when it comes to India, where do we find coral reefs in India? You can see here is this location Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep Islands, 
Gulf of Manar along the coast of Northern Karnataka and Maharashtra, Gulf of Kutch. Okay, because half of India lies. This is this is where the actual tropic of Cancer passes through. That is twenty three and a half degree north. South southern part of tropic of Cancer lies in the tropics and it has warm waters. Okay, because Indian coastline experiences warm waters, we find corals in Indian Ocean. So let's understand what is coral bleaching. Okay, something the term is in use is coral bleaching. So what is coral bleaching? Coral bleaching is something when the corals are getting destroyed. Okay, when this coral polyp and the algae, when the symbiotic relationship is getting destroyed, and that particular phenomena is called as coral bleaching. What will happen during the extreme conditions? If the temperature increases very fast or the temperature reduces in a very fast pace, then what happens? The symbiotic algae, that is zooxanthellae, living in the tissues, okay, and it will be it will be lost okay the algae will be lost so the symbiotic relationship between the coral polyp and the algae is lost and as a result of this as a result of this the corals will turn completely into white color you can see in the background here the corals getting or turning into white color okay this is what is called coral bleaching it is not that the coral bleaching is the end of corals okay coral bleaching can be reversed if it is in the first and the second stages, just like the human disorder, the cancer that we have, if it is in the first and second stages, it can easily be cured. And even the coral reefs, even if they have started bleaching, okay, if the standard measures are adopted, then easily the coral can be revived. And why is it significant now? Why are we even talking about the coral bleaching as such now? What is the issue? The issue is that. The issue is that the first time, in the first time that during this particular time period, that is in the month of March, in the month of March, it is a onset of summer, it is the onset of summer in Northern Hemisphere and it is the winter, almost the end of winter in Southern Hemisphere. Okay, I hope you can understand the difference. Even during the winter, in the cold conditions along the coast of Australia, that is a natural La Nina condition. La Nina is a condition where you will have more rainfall. Okay, even during the natural La Nina condition, even if even during the moisture or the winter or the cold time, we can see the coral bleaching happening along the coast of Australia. This is something to worry about. If the coral bleaching is happening in the time period of summer, then it is said to be natural. Even during the time of winter, if the coral bleaching is happening, then it indicates the worst condition of the global warming. Okay, It indicates the worst condition of the global warming. You can see here, despite the cooling conditions, 2021 was one of the hottest years on record. Even during the winter situations or the winter conditions, the corals are not able to sustain the oceanic rise in temperature. This is something to worry about. This is why the coral bleaching is in use and corals are at the edge of getting extinct. Okay, at the edge of if the same thing continues for the next 50, 100 years, then for sure we will not have something called as coral reefs. If the water remains too warm for too long, corals will eventually die. This is what is happening and what is required in order to solve this problem one thing is required is a stronger climate action okay we need to step up we need to step up our we need to step up our goals and we have to move towards sustainable development australia may warm by 4 degrees celsius or more at the end of this century that is by 2100 australia would have for average temperature of more than 4 degrees. Under this scenario, widespread coral bleaching is likely to affect the Great Barrier Reef every year from 2044. We are just 22 years away from the start of coral bleaching in an extensive way. In a very large scale, we can witness coral bleaching if the global warming or if the climate change 
continues or if the emissions if the emissions continues in the same way as of now as usual we will see the question what are corals define coral bleaching discuss the impact of climate change on corals okay as i always tell you divide the question into different parts what are corals you have to define the symbiotic relationship between the algae that is zooxanthellae and the coral polyp is called as coral bleaching or corals for that matter then then you have to define the coral bleaching when there is a cut or when the symbiotic relationship is not working and the corals turn white completely then that particular process is called as coral bleaching discuss the impact of coral bleaching or discuss the impact of climate change on corals what is the impact of climate change and how the climate change and the global warming is affecting the corals you have to give some of the examples some of the data where the coral bleaching is happening because of climate change okay that's the end for today i hope you have liked the video for more such enriching content please subscribe to legacy as academy have a nice day thank you